When you talk about the overall Altium platform, we're talking about the battery system or the the RES, the remote energy storage system, or big 400 volt or 800 volt, depending on what you've got battery pack. We're talking about the drive units, um, and we have multiple configurations of drive units. We've got rear wheel drive, front wheel drive. We've got small motors, larger motors, you know, and we can configure them any way we like. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about our integrated power electronics, our high voltage lines, all, all of those sorts of systems that come together to make our propulsion system, our electric propulsion system. So when you think about Ultium, it's really all of those pieces and parts. I feel like Ultium is this nebulous concept that General Motors has introduced. And I understand there's a lot of technical bits that underpin it, but I need to understand from you, what the hell is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. When you talk about the overall Altium platform, we're talking about the battery system or the, the RES, the remote energy storage system, or big 400 volt or 800 volt, depending on what you've got battery pack. We're talking about the drive units, um, and we have multiple configurations of drive units. We've got rear wheel drive, front wheel drive. We've got small motors, larger motors, you know, and we can configure them any way we like. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about our integrated power electronics, our high voltage lines, all, all of those sorts of systems that come together to make our propulsion system, our electric propulsion system. So when you think about Ultium, it's really all of those pieces and parts. So, that's so let's really start with the battery. Is. Okay. I think that's the first and probably most important point. Battery technology is really the thing that holds EVs back. Yeah. It's a very hard way to package energy uh, and very hard to refill, obviously, from a time yeah. issue. So in your case, in the Ultium, have you guys come up, or is Ultium about a different way of packaging energy? The constant debate in the industry is what's the right way to package energy, right? Is it small cylindrical cells? Is it canisters? Is it pouches? What is the right way to package energy? Mm -hmm. On the Ultium system, we've decided that large format flat pouches is the most efficient way to package the energy, get the highest energy density possible so we can get as much range as possible out of the battery pack. So if you look at, if you look at our energy or our battery systems, we've got large format approximately 100 amp hour cells that we then put into modules and then we put those modules into packs and we can format those cells in several different ways depending on the type of vehicle that we want so for example on an suv we'll we'll stand those cells up those those large format cells up and we'll, we used to have the the breakfast we call it the breakfast debate do you stack them like toast or do you flip them over and you stack them like pancakes mm -hmm. because that'll depend how much energy density you get in a module how many cells you can put in there and how high that pack is so in an suv for example we stack them like toast on their side so we get more packs per module that way but the battery pack is taller. But on a high roof vehicle, you can afford to do that. You can afford to have your battery pack taller, you move your floor up, you move your, your H point up, your roof lines higher, etc. You go to a low slung sports car, now you need to take those cells and you need to flip them on their side. Pancakes. And now it becomes pancakes, right? And that way you can get a, a shorter height. I never looked to your at a Corvette pack. as a pancake. <laughs> Just the battery pack, mm -hmm. right? Now you can lower your floor. You can lower your age point. You can drop the roof line. You can get in a sports car mode. Um, then you take a look at a Hummer and you say, well, I got lots of room. I need more energy. Well, now you can take those modules that are on their side and you can double stack them. And that's what we did on the Hummer. We went to a double stacked battery pack. So you actually have 24 modules in the Hummer to give you the amount of energy that's required to get the range and the performance that the Hummer needs with their mass and their aerodynamics. So to me, the big, the most important part of the Ultium when you're talking about the battery pack is um, the ability to modify it to the needs of any specific program that you have. And then we have different um, battery structures depending on how many modules and how big a battery pack you want to have. Okay, so perhaps a stupid question. Other car manufacturers, they've done that debate. Mm -hmm. Cylinders versus packs, you've clearly done packs, but like, for example, Nissan has a battery factory across the freeway from their leaf production, and it is packs, kind of like you described. Yep. How is this different other than packaging it for tall vehicles and yeah. pancakes? Beyond just the way that the cell is packaged is the chemistry within the cell, 
right? So we have an NCMA formula, at least for this first generation of Altium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminum. And what we're really trying to do is re reduce our dependency on the rare earth metals, on the cobalt, for example, and increase some of the other metal usages. So every company really has their own R&D department that's sort of determining what that sweet spot is from a chemical makeup of the cell perspective, mm -hmm. but also to make sure that we're constantly evolving our battery chemistry mm -hmm. to get to how do we get more energy density? How do we get a lower cost cell with more energy density? And where is that sweet spot? Is it more of a cost thing or is it more of a supply chain thing? So I think it's several things. I think it's a cost thing. I do obviously we're always monitoring the supply chain, but the <coughs> supply chain has not limited our ability to do what we have decided we want to do within GM from a battery perspective. So it really gets into what is the right chemical makeup to get us the range that we're looking for at the cost point that we're looking for. Okay, so if I'm getting this straight, the battery, it's just a bit more flexible is, yeah. is really what Ultium is. And you are still, it sounds to me, like it's one grand science experiment of you changing out the cells to see what works going forward. So what's in the Lyric today may be different in three years. Correct. But the structure itself, that's the part that is the thing of Ultium. Am I getting that yeah, correct? Yeah, I mean, we will never stop evolving and we will never stop researching and looking for improvements in our battery chemistry. But but the, the way that the pack is built, the way the structure mm. is built, the way that the cells are composed, the way that we stack them, the way that we link them together, um, that will stay consistent. Okay, so let's you and I transition into getting energy into yep. the battery pack. Yep. Uh, there's a couple of different competing thoughts, schools of thought here. There's the Mercedes and uh, some Tesla where it's 400 volt. Uh, and then the architecture changes when you get into the Porsche system or the Hyundai system. They've gone to an 800 volt with the main benefit of it being much faster charging. Where do you guys kind of fall in on this with this whole Ultium stuff? Yeah, I'll say right now the Lyric is a 400 volt system. I'm gonna open the door there, I have to ask. Is there plans to do an 800 volt system or more in a, in a Cadillac? Nothing that we are prepared to announce at this time, but like I said, we're, not, we're never closing any doors. I options. think I see your poker face. <laughs> I'm pretty good at poker. You are pretty I'm good. Not I'm not playing cards. I'm not a gambler, so I'm <laughs> not going to even get into Aww. that. Um, okay, so if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, th th there is some at least research going on and you, with, with 800 volt or beyond. But then what about the onboard charger itself? Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's funny, you look at some systems, and uh, uh, there was a new EV, I won't say which one, that came out, was just introduced. It's got an onboard, it's like a 6.6 kilowatt chargers in today 2022 yeah where uh like some of the porsche systems it's like 11 point something mm -hmm. you know mo almost double yeah where are you guys at with this so our debut edition lyric comes standard with a 19.2 so it, it is actually um the largest on board in the industry today and uh from an ac level two perspective you can get about 52 miles of range in an hour it's pretty huge it, it's huge it's huge um and, and it's the, the highest by industry standards today, and it was a very deliberate choice to package it. It does require a second onboard charging module, which does take up some space. But um, we've heard the feedback from our customers that range is critical, but speed of charge is also critical. And then from a DC fast charge perspective, we can charge up to 190 kilowatts. Let's you know. go back to the, the battery thing, the pancakes versus yeah. the toast. Actually, I had pancakes this morning, so I I'm more know. of a... Well, there you go. Yeah. We're both Corvette yeah, people. There you go. Hey, did that provide a challenge in headroom? So, yes, because if you look at the Lyric, the Lyric is, I, I call it a very expressive SUV. It's a midsize SUV, but it really has that sport car feel to it. You really did slam the roof line down and give it that really fast look to it. So, yes, there were challenges given the, the chair height of the vehicle to enable the battery pack and the roof line that we wanted to enable. Mm. The all glass roof was a huge enabler for us. If you look at the Lyric, um, all of our vehicles are all glass roof. So now we don't have that stack up of material that you would typically have oh. in a traditional vehicle with roof beams and then you've got your acoustics and you got your wire harnesses and you have your headliner and you know all that big stack. We're, we're, we're a layer of glass now. Does the roof open, or is it just a, a glass that... We have both options. Oh, you do? Okay. Yep. But they're all glass no matter what. All glass no matter what. Neat trick. What's another one that was unique that enabled you to do something you couldn't have done 
with the lyric with this Ultium Well, toaster. I mean, uh, well, I think if you look at, <coughs> say, the front end of the vehicle, for example, if you look at our grill, right, that was a very conscious decision to still give the vehicle a grill. Now, from an airflow perspective, you got to be careful. You need some airflow. Yeah. It's not zero. Right. And even if you look at vehicles that have no grill, they still have some slots. They still have some opportunities for airflow, but not anywhere close to the type of airflow openings that you need. on. Internal and what are you using the airflow thing. for? Um, you still got a cool, you've got a low temp radiator that still has to cool the battery. And then we've got our integrated power electronics and various mm. modules under hood that still need a certain amount of airflow, a certain amount of cooling. So what that allowed us to do was keep a uh, more traditional, I'll say, front-end look to the vehicle because we still have a grill, but that grill is a polycarbonate that's etched on the back side and that we're able to project lighting through. So we've been able to turn the grill into a very integrated part of the vehicle's choreography of the light show and really take advantage of the fact that we don't need the openings in the grill. I believe that's what the kids the today grill. call bling. It's got some bling. It's got some bling to it. It's got some bling because why not? It, mm -hmm. It's it it's beautiful. It's that jewel effect that we're looking for. Okay, so we, you gave it some character. So we we could have decided to do no grill, and then we probably would have saved a lot of money. But it was and not it the vehicle we were looking for. And you'd have for. a BMW i3, and it's no one bought it because it we was for. too far off the plantation. People just didn't. Yeah. And that's why a Tesla sells well, because it looks like an Audi A7. People want an A7, so you made it look like a Cadillac. I made it look, we made it look like a Cadillac. Yes, we did. So let's go back to the battery itself. Okay. How do you manage temperature? Pretty much every EV company has their own proprietary um, thermal management system, right? We mm. do have a heat pump system like most, most do. We've got a compressor-based... 45, I think we have 45 cc compressor. So we, and we, then we have our thermal management system. We don't go into a lot of detail mm. about how it's set up. I think this is the point of the episode where we got to turn it back around to the audience. Okay. Get some feedback. Great. Last time you asked, what, impressions? What, what, I, what are you looking for in a Cadillac? We already got, that's in the yep. other episode. Yep. What kind of feedback are we looking for on this one? Because we got a little more in the weeds on. We got mo way more yeah. tech on this one. Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, what other questions would you have about how GM has engineered our battery system? Because we've got a lot of really impressive experts within the company that might be able to provide some of that feedback over and above what I was able to provide. Wow, you are opening up the floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> Your handler over here, Renee, is like, oh my God, she shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but you said it, so it's going out there. Uh, what the lady says, she wants... Uh, what is it for future battery tech or how GM handles batteries? Yeah. Okay. Wait, let's have some open dialogue. Let's Why have not? some. And uh, you know what? And you, and I, you will come back on the show and you will answer these questions because okay. I can't. Renee can't. Can I, phone a friend? can I bring a friend? You can definitely bring a friend. Okay. But they have All to right. be as cool as you. All right. Uh, so let us know in the comments below or via social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and with that, I need to give them another fun fact about you. And I, there's one I want to share which you're not going to let me share. Okay. So I won't, I won't say that one. Okay. But uh, uh, how about this one? So y you and your sister, both chief engineers, yep. both went to University of Michigan, yep. but then you diverged. Your graduate degrees are different. We did. We did. She went for a um, graduate degree in mechanical engineering. Actually, automotive engineering was mm. her graduate degree, and I went for a business degree ended up getting an MBA and it was kind of funny because after we both got our graduate degrees she ended up getting an assignment working in purchasing which I would argue is more business minded, yeah, way more business -minded. and I got um, a role in a, in a chief engineer role which is arguably more automotive engineering focused but but you know we we both have just we just enjoy learning quite mm. frankly and gaining knowledge and trying new things is she more of a car girl um I will we'll go head to head well, does she have a cool car? She, well, so she's responsible for trucks at GM, right? Oh, so, so she's got a, a truck. She's got an AT4 right now. But actually, I think right now she's got the new um, Den Sierra Denali. Oh, so she's that. a little uptown. She's fancy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we just, I think we stumbled <laughs> on some sibling rivalry. That's, that's the point where we have to go. So until we see you in the next episode, bish beta.